Hello, friends and family. It's me, friendly neighborhood pediatrician Gary. I wanted to take a moment to talk to you for just a, a little bit about the vaccine for COVID that's coming out in the coming weeks. At the beginning of the pandemic, I brought you just a little bit of information about what we knew, knew, know about COVID. And now I want to talk to you just a little bit about the vaccine because I think it's very important that all of my friends and family get vaccinated. I've been asked so many times of late, will you be getting the vaccine? And the answer without hesitation or reservation is unequivocally, yes, I will be getting the vaccine. I have seen what COVID can do to people and I don't want it to happen to me or any of my loved ones. The other question I get is, are you afraid of the vaccine? And I can answer that one pretty unequivocally as well. No, I'm not. But first I'd like to conquer some of the myths. A lot of people are, are circulating a lot of crazy things, not only about vaccines in general, but about the COVID vaccine in particular. So if your friends are saying this vaccine may contain a microchip, this vaccine is political. This vaccine contains fetal tissue. This vaccine will make me sterile. This vaccine can alter your DNA. Or this vaccine was rushed. I want you to be able to answer them and answer, answer them appropriately. You should always respond with when someone presents you with information like that. Which vaccine are you talking about? Because there are many and they're not all the same. Where are you getting your data? Because that's very important. A mommy blog does not necessarily mean good science. And how are we friends? I'm just kidding. Don't, don't tell me that. But maybe question a little. So just a quick uh, overview on microchips. So if you're worried about the government tracking you somehow um, by plant, implanting a GPS microchip, the needle that we use to give vaccines is typically a 21 gauge needle um, or a 23 gauge needle. Um, at, the, at, the, at the largest, um, we would usually use um, uh, a 21 gauge needle. So what's the diameter of that? Um, well, you can see here, you know, the diameter uh, of the 21 gauge needle is 0.8 millimeters, which is, that's the outside diameter. That's actually quite small. In fact, the smallest GPS microchip ever manufactured is four millimeters by four millimeters by 2.1 millimeters. Wouldn't quite fit in the tube. The word about 5G, what is 5G? It sounds pretty technical. I mean, I have 4G and then there was 4G LTE, but what is 5G? 5G just stands for fifth generation. It's cellular technology. And believe it or not, this may rock your world. The waves that cellular uses are actually light waves, similar to radio waves, only a, a little bit different. And 5G is just the next generation of technology that will allow us to use those waves to communicate via cell phone. It will not in any way be in a vaccine. Also, Bill Gates, not at all involved in these vaccines, although he does help with a lot of vaccines around the world um, as a philanthropy project, and he's a pretty nice guy for doing that. Vaccines are not political. They're apolitical. They're science. Don't listen to politicians about the vaccine. Listen to health experts. Many politicians tend to politicize science so that they can control the message. Don't listen to them, listen to scientists. You wouldn't listen to politicians about how to do your job. So believe me when I tell you, it's very frustrating to listen to politicians tell you how to take care of your health. Now, the immune system, if you, I want you to think of it as a teacher. It teaches your body how to fight off the infection. Its antigens are the best example of those teachers. Antigens are small parts of viruses or bacteria that we can use to train your immune system. And your immune system is composed of many, many types of cells. Um, but B cells, T cells, and natural killer cells are kind of the precursor cells, the cells that start it all. But B cells um, in response to viruses are very, very important. They produce what's called, what are called antibodies. Antibodies um, are very specific usually to different parts, those different antigens um, that bacteria and viruses present in our body. And they attack them, they stick to them, and they flag them so that the other cells in the body can sweep them up and destroy them. Think of antibodies as little red flags, if you will. So how do we make the teachers? How do we make the antigens and stuff that we would put in a vaccine? There are ways of doing it. There are many, many ways of doing it. And this, this vaccine 
uh, that's coming out right now, the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, the mRNA vaccines are new. And it has a lot of people a little scared. Let's just talk about how you make regular vaccines first so you can understand how the mRNA vaccine is different and also how it's safe. Attenuated or inactivated vaccines, such as found in MMR or chickenpox or influenza, that just means you take the virus and you either kill it, you know, with heat or chemicals, or you take the some components out, you attenuate it. Um, it's like removing the engine from a car. If I gave you a car with no engine, you couldn't drive it anywhere. If I give you a virus with no engine, it cannot replicate and hurt your body. Other vaccines are called conjugate vaccines, in which case you take the protein or the antigen or the sugar or whatever um, is going to train your immune system and you stick it uh, to something else. Um, that way you're only presenting a small piece of the bacteria or virus to your body and not the whole thing. Um, and in this way, your immune system sees just that piece and will learn to attack it. The mRNA vaccine from Pfizer and Moderna instead help bypass all of those things. They instead give you RNA, which is the code for a specific part of a bacteria or a virus, in this case a virus. It gives you the code for that and allows your body's machinery, and we'll talk about that in a second, to manufacture the antigen, to manufacture, in, in this case, the spike protein, so that your body will attack it and get rid of it. Very simple. Also very complex. But like I said, there are thousands of ways of, of making vaccines, and we're only beginning to explore the possibilities. The spike protein um, from COVID-19 um, was discovered pretty early. The, in fact, the whole genome was mapped in December uh, of 2019. Um, so we've had a little over a year um, to look at, um, test, and replicate um, the spike protein against the different vaccines. And in fact, that's why they're rolling out soon. There's a great article in Nature, um, the link here at the bottom um, will take you to it. And it's got filled with tons of wonderful information about COVID-19 and also about how the vaccines against COVID-19 will work. Real quick, basic biology. So how does the RNA get into your body? How does it get into your cells? And will that cause major problems? Well, they take the RNA sequence for the spike protein, the code for the spike protein that is found on COVID. They wrap it in some lipid so that the lipid can stick to your cell. And once those lipids stick to your cell, then the RNA can enter your cell where it is taken up by the ribosomes AKA the manufacturing lines and made into the protein. That protein is then excreted back out into your blood and those antibodies can be formed against it. So you're not making the virus. You're only making the spike protein. Again, it can't give you COVID. It can't give you anything. It's just the spike protein. The only thing it can give you is an immune response. And we hope a very robust immune response that will last a long time. And so in order to address those questions about the biology, the vaccine doesn't contain fetal cells, tissue, or even DNA. It only contains mRNA, lipids, and a buffer solution made of salt and sugar and water. That's it. There are no big preservatives. That's why it has to be kept so cold. There is no thimerosal. There is no uh, formaldehyde. There's nothing else in it besides the mRNA, the buffer solution, and the lipids that coat the the mRNA to get it into your cell. It can't infect, it can't infect or change your DNA because it's made of RNA. And those are two different things. It's transcribed or read um, in the cytoplasm or the, the aqueous part of your cell that's outside the nucleus where your DNA resides. It will not affect your DNA. It will not alter your genetic structure. It can't biologically. And it can't make you sterile. There's some crazy stuff circulating about how the antibodies produced against the spike protein would, would actually make you sterile. It contains nothing that would make you sterile. The spike protein of the coronavirus is nothing like the uh, uh, sensitin-1 um, of the placenta. The vaccine was rushed. This is the one I've heard the most. We've rushed the vaccine. It's not been proven safe. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of uh, big concerns about, you know, uh, how this is pushed through so fast. And again, that sort of falls back on the politics thing. We cut out a lot of the politics in the red tape, which is great. That that helps a lot. But being being fast doesn't mean unsafe. 
computer speeds, for example, have just taken off. I mean, think about the speed of the phone in your pocket. Science has taken huge leap forwards, and the science for the new mRNA has been under study since 2003. That's over 17 years. And so this vaccine has been in the works for much, much longer than people perceive. The scientists who have been working on this technology have also been working on it for 40 years. It's a husband and wife couple, they're physicians, and they kind of set the bar a little high. This vaccine may, be, may prove to be a true miracle of modern science, and it may save millions of lives. The studies had 40,000 and 30,000 people in them to look at safety and were proven safe. So here's a, an example of the timeline for a traditional vaccine versus the SARS-CoV-2 vaccine um, that had been under production by Pfizer and Moderna. Again, we took existing technology and, and were able to skip uh, a lot of the development phase of the vaccine because it was already there. So years and years were cut out just by having a previously existing uh, prototype uh, from the 2003 SARS outbreak. And then again, we, we cut off a lot of the red tape at the end. So the regulatory process, the bureaucracy of getting the vaccine approved would actually uh, go much faster. And also they ran vaccine trials in parallel. So as phase one was finishing, instead of running them sequentially back to back, they actually started the second phase of the trial before the first one had even completed. But it wasn't rushed, it was well studied, and it will be safe. What's the big difference? Researchers had the head start, like I said. Genome sequencing and lab capabilities are much faster. Things can take hours instead of weeks now. And researchers ran a lot of those processes in parallel. Scientists and regulators cut the red tape, as we said. So when you're confronted with people trying to convince you about the vaccine, for or against, I want you to ask, what's, what's their motivation? You know, there's this myth that pediatricians or people that uh, give a lot of vaccines actually get kickbacks or make money from vaccines. I wish that that were true. I would have retired a long time ago. However, pediatricians, the specialty that gives the most vaccines of any group in the United States, is actually the lowest paid specialty. You could look that up. There are no kickbacks. I have no financial incentive. I have no investments that I know of, unless it's in my 401k. I have no investments in, in pharmaceutical companies. I hope that they succeed, as I hope all businesses succeed. Uh, but I have no other alternative interest in seeing them succeed. What I want from them is a safe product that can help keep my friends and my family and my patients healthy and safe. That's my number one priority. That's what I've dedicated my life to. And so I would, without any reservation, recommend you get your vaccine this winter because by golly, I know we're all tired of living in social isolation. And I would love to be able to see you all and do it safely again, maybe next Christmas. Thanks for listening. Please get the vaccine.